Welcome to Protomotive. Today we've got some pretty fun heads here. And these are for a 993 turbo conversion or upgrade. Got these well, fresh in the boxes, but uh, I'm kind of lying to you because we got them in the boxes a couple of weeks ago for machine work. Brian over there didn't want to install flame rings. They're a little touchy. So he sent the heads over for us to install the flame rings. We've got those done and we we're boxing them back up and I thought these were just too fun to not share. Let's go ahead and uh, get one of these suckers out of the box. Show you how he packs them. He does a nice job with these things. Really simple packing method, but pretty effective nonetheless. All right, that guy's out. So, what do we have here? This is a 993 Carrera style cylinder head because this particular one is a turbo. It's a turbo upgrade, turbo conversion. He can make them in the 993 turbo style with the higher sides, but we decided against that because liner availability. The 993 turbo liners are 114 and a half tall. These are 120 tall. They make the difference up in the cylinder head. As you can see, this huge step in here versus these are flat. So Brian made these up to match the available liners. Uh, got some uh, pistons made up to fit this all together. Uh, uh, eight to one compression at the end of the day. Uh, with a nice piston and a super strong head. So here's the overall cylinder head. Very nice work. So let's talk about this guy for a little bit. First thing I noticed, looking at these suckers, pulling them out of the box, was the valves in here look absolutely massive. And hang on, I forgot to get my caliper. <laughs> okay, we're back. We got our caliper and a snack. Sorry, chewing. Anyway, first thing we noticed when unboxing these things were, holy cow, would you look at the size of these valves? They, they do, they just, they look massive compared to the stock head. Oh, that's not going anywhere. Anyway, uh, 993 turbo valve. Got these at 50 millimeters intake, 42 and a half millimeters exhaust. This sucker looks like it's about 52 and a half intake versus the 50. I don't know if you can see that. I'll line it up to the bottom there and you can see the gap on the top. And 44 and a half exhaust versus stock 42 and a half on the exhaust. So we're plus two intake and exhaust. And, I mean, the valves already look big and, and they're air-cooled. So we've been used to doing a lot of the four-valve stuff lately, and they've got tiny valves by comparison. So these two look massive. We did, like I said earlier, we've already installed flame rings in these when we were getting ready to pack them up and ship them. And wanted to pull them back out again to show you all what we're working with. They were really just beautiful. So I figured we'd show them off a little bit before we shipped them off. Ivan over at IMA is putting this engine together. He's using our 4 liter stroker crank. 102 millimeter 3.8s with a 80.4 stroker crank which makes 4 liters. Using our uh, crank and rods and uh, pistons and liners we've gotten together and got the cylinder heads all together and he's using uh, ITBs, individual throttle bodies, uh, MoTeC on this. We've already built the turbo system and shipped it off. It's going to be quite the engine and I'll tell you a few reasons why we did this but let's continue to go through this. So we went with standard inlet size on the ports. Let's see, these should be about, yeah, yeah very close. Casting on the turbo is actually slightly larger, within three quarters of a millimeter. But uh, you can see they've left a lot more meat 
on the side here to run much bigger ports. These same cylinder heads, he'll run the, the stock ports, 41 and a half. He'll run the Euro RS ports at 43 and a half. I know we, we sized these cylinder heads up to the ITBs that Ivan was getting made up. For a turbo engine, we don't really want massive ports on these things anyway. There's no reason to compromise the, the low speed to pick up the top end when the turbos are going to be taking care of the top end. On the exhaust side, you can see the ports on these things are a little strange. They're what you'd call the D-shaped port. We're looking at about 40 millimeters about 40 millimeters so the port size hasn't changed but the d shape what they're doing there is they're increasing the short side radius of the port uh, to keep it from not necessarily cavitating but leaving the the wall when when you're doing port work and, and whatnot if the short side radius gets too tight in there you get a turbulent boundary layer rather than following the wall. So they bring the wall out to keep that boundary layer or fill this boundary layer with uh, aluminum so that the flow stays attached to the inside radius. And that, even though the port is slightly smaller in diameter, you actually increase or improve flow because you've gotten rid of a turbulent boundary layer on the inside radius. So the other advantage of the D-shaped port is it does provide a slight AR and a reversionary effect on the port, so it keeps the, the flow from backing back up into the port. Uh, that, that was popular for a while and still effective. The valve stem diameters are the same. Guides are about the same. I don't have springs on here, but... Uh, same spring package would work on both uh, all bolt patterns and whatnot it, it's made to bolt up to the standard cam housings nothing crazy here because we've got the same number of valves same number of plugs same number of everything the, the billet heads are a oem replacement style cylinder head but i don't know if you can notice that little port's missing that little port right there pops out in here. That's your secondary air injection. The secondary air injection port has a nasty habit on turbo heads of blowing or torching out the seal. This cylinder head is fine. I'm not seeing that at all, but I've seen too many of these cylinder heads with this torched out and they've got this crazy exhaust leak or it sounds like you've blown a cylinder head and a liner out. And you take it apart and that's all fine. You pull the heads off the cam housings in this secondary air injection port because the exhaust pressure and temperature going down through there has torched a hole out through the side of this thing and created a nasty exhaust leak that's damaging the cylinder head. So rather than having to plug these or do some machine work or weld them or whatever you need to, they just don't exist. So you've got a much stronger head, no potential for leak path there. Brian's running high rate valve springs. I think he told me they're anywhere like 280 to 300 pounds over the nose, probably 125 pound seat pressure. There is titanium retainers with valve locks. I think they're single groove keepers versus triple groove. These are the triple groove. So those all came pre-installed, ready to go. The cost of the cylinder heads, it seems outrageous at first, but if you take a stock cylinder head, change the valves, put brand new valves in it. If you want to go oversize, you'll end up having to potentially change the seats too. Let's see. And we've got 52 millimeters there. We've got a 52 and a half millimeter valve there. So the seats aren't even large enough. And same thing on the exhaust side here. Seats, meh, 44. Maybe we could potentially get a 44 and a half. Be very close to getting these valve sizes in a stock cylinder head, like a Euro RS stuff. But that being said, if you put new valves, change the guides, high rate valve springs, titanium retainers, machine up the SAI ports, do some nice port work in here rather than cast, fly cut, surface, flame ring. These heads also, if you notice, have a potential issue there. 
we have to weld in these top three fins to produce this effect to gain the strength. As you can see how close that flame ring is to the edge. If we machine this flame ring in the cylinder head without first welding this up, we end up cutting right through here and the, the flame ring pops out the side. A lot of people are using, and I see them on Patrick Motorsports, they've got an L-shaped flame ring versus being full width. The thing is only full width in the liner groove and then so you're not having to machine all this. I think Roof came up with it. I'm not sure, but uh, they, they machine an L shape so that the, the groove going in the cylinder head is very thin and then it's L shaped so that it's fat in the cylinder liner and that keeps you from having to weld up the cylinder head. So you're not improving the strength of the cylinder head. You're just kind of taking a shortcut using an L shaped ring, but it does make the machine work quite complex, accommodating the two different groove dimensions. The ring is pretty complex. They've got them in, I believe, stainless steel. They're listed on their website. Oh, and then to go back to where we were on the, the cost of uh, the cylinder heads versus these, you've got to twin plug these also. So by the time you add all these factors in, you're rapidly approaching the cost of a billet cylinder head ready to go out of the box. You could also reclaim some cost on cylinder head. I'm not trying to talk us out of work here. Uh, put us out of business because uh, you know, we do a lot of machine work on these heads. They're fantastic heads. There's good reasons to use these heads. But if, if you were looking at cost analysis between the two, you might decide with a billet head over this head. But you do lose originality. You do lose some of the fun stuff on these things. I don't know if you can see that. It says HO350, which is actually an R350 Reynolds Reynolds Aircraft 350. What's, what's that even called now? It's got some funny name. Hiduminium. That's it. Hiduminium 350. It was developed for uh, Rolls-Royce back in uh, the world wars uh, they developed it for aircraft engine for high temperature resistance extreme high temperature resistance we'll get into that in just a minute but that is one of the, the advantages of the cylinder head over even the high strength alloy 2618 so anyway they are twin plug we have these come stock Ooh. check this out we've got a crack here can you see that these were just shipped to us to put flame rings in. This head needs a repair job. Anyway, we better look at the other one. So that's a yet one more disadvantage of dealing with used cylinder heads. These are brand new out of the box. We don't have cracks in them. Uh, this twin plug job that was done, the spark plug needs to be unshrouded like the stock port. Both these are, these are all a little tight. Those could be unshrouded a little bit. At least these are radius nice. These have sharp edges. That'll detonate. You don't want that. So we'll have to fix that too. Anyway, back to the cylinder heads. Enough rambling. Um, oh, cooling fins. Let's check this out. Cooling fins versus cooling fins. We got some fat cooling fins here, thick cooling fins. And we're talking, these are 1.7, these are 2.8. So the thickness of these is, is massive. Does that provide more or less cooling? We've got a lot more airflow going through the cylinder head. The open area is a, a lot larger. We've got the same surface area because we have the same number of fins. I don't know if you caught that before when I was holding them up next to each other, but fin versus fin, this head is taller, so you can't count this fin. We're 15 fins up to that deck, and one, two, 14, 15 fins. Same number of fins. Uh, again, we've got the same surface area because we've got the same number of fins, same height, same depth. 
but we've got less air going through this cylinder head. You can see also Porsche relieved around the cylinder head stud area. This is not the airflow has to flow from the fan down through here. It's going to hit a wall right here. So it's going to have a hard time getting through that area to these fins. So this, this area is going to get pretty hot. This area back here is wide open, unobstructed. Uh, I don't know. I can see all the way through it. I don't uh, this camera on my head thing is a little hard to see down through there. Versus this one, if we're going down through it. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a huge amount of area going through there, but we do. You know, it's probably three-eighths of an inch deep versus th these come right to the top. So that, that's something to, to look at as well. We, we've got a lot more mass. So the more mass in this cylinder head may take a lot longer to heat up, so it may not have as much to cool down. But once it is hot, it may have a hard time cooling back down. I haven't looked up the thermal conductivity of the 2618 versus the RR350. I looked up everything else, but didn't, didn't think of that one. You know, in effect, how fast does it radiate the heat uh, from the cylinder head? But that's something to consider. I may have liked something a little bit closer to that. I mean, he could have used a tapered cutter. Uh, you can see the OEM fins are fat at the bottom, skinny on the top. The powder are parallel. So anyway, not trying to cut them down, just showing you what I'm seeing as we're, we're going through this and uh, ideas for the next one. Now, Bill over at Extreme, he makes uh, billet cylinder heads also, uh, as does uh, 9M. Uh, I know CMW used to make billet air-cooled cylinder heads for a while. Uh, the 9M and CMW were all 2618. These are 2618 as well. Uh, that's that alloy, that base alloy they're making them out of. Whereas uh, the extreme heads, I believe, are cast in a A356 alloy. Same as a 964 or 911 cylinder head, whereas the turbo heads, being the RR350 alloy, are very different. 